The story is about two royal families in the empire. The first one was Shiwitz, renowned as fearsome warlords, and the second was the Clyder, known for their wealth. If the power of these two families were combined, they would eclipse the imperial family itself. There was a time when these two families were close to each other, but ten years ago, something happened. In the middle of the night, in a dark forest, the Duke and Duchess of House Clyde fell from a cliff and died. When the Duke Schuitz heard about the accident of his friend, he ran to the accident scene and only saw his friend's body and a child's small clothes. He searched for the boy in the northern side of his territory but was unable to find the child. Then ten years passed since that incident. Duke Schuitz said to a child sleeping in front of him. The lady squeezed her hands. Now they have finally met. Duke Schuitz found the male lead, Damien. It was similar to the story. The lady sitting there was thinking that she kept her promise to find a family for him, and maybe they won't kick her out of the orphanage. According to the story, Damien will fight alongside Duke Schuitz, that will break out after four years from the adoption, and then Damien will meet the female lead and live happily. Duke Schuitz adopted the child sitting next to Damien. That girl was shocked to hear this. The man standing behind Duke Schuitz was shocked and asked if he can raise two women together or not. Then he said he may be not able to. He said she will become my daughter-in-law, but that's not how it's supposed to work out. The girl was shocked to hear this from Duke Schuitz. She only joined the orphanage because she didn't want to end up on the streets. The girl was getting shocks again and again. She couldn't believe that he wanted her to be his daughter-in-law. One man also in the orphanage was looking at the children. He said the kids were healthy as per his vision. The woman working there said the orphanage's first priority is to take care of their children. That man said he'll take one. At that time, the king had won so many wars, and they had so much money in their land. The noble people were eager to spend their wealth and to show people how generous and good they are. And that's when they started adopting people who lost their parents in the wars. But it turned out to be something else. A child was watching the maid. She was saying thanks to someone. The child said that she knew that maid just wanted to impress the nobles, or she doesn't even feed the kids and bathe them. To secure the orphanage donations, the orphanage directors only accept good-looking orphans. The maid found that girl alongside the road when she was there sitting and crying alone. Asked her where was her mother. She was one of them, the child's. But the maid forgot one crucial thing. Her mother was an infamous thief who caused trouble to the king. But her mother was caught while stealing and hanged to death. She was standing there alone when other kids were playing there. She thought no one would take the daughter of a thief. Kids were calling her to play with them. She was again came into the orphanage after being abandoned by her parents for the third time. She carried one girl on her hands. Back in the past when her carriage was in an accident, she found something interesting. This world was a story from a book. She looked at that book. There where she was living everything could have been changed by a single flick of a wrist. In her past life, she worked as a scientist. Memories weren't that good inside her mind, but she remembers that she was so attached to the work she was doing there. That accident wasn't that bad. Accident triggered the memories inside her mind from the past. But still, something was bothering her. She has read so many books, but she only remembered what happens in this life with her. It was hard for her to remember the title of the book. She just stopped thinking about it because she knew what will happen in the future. They were sitting and she saw the director there in her expression. She understood by her expression that she lost the money in gambling. Director knows that it's a losing battle thing. Still, she goes there every time. She saw a new kid. She wasn't even scared or nervous at all. His clothes were dirty and she set him to say hello to everyone. She reminds everyone that he'll be joining everyone from then onwards. It was Damien. She recognized him immediately. She didn't forget about him even if she was living in a novel. Damien was the main lead, the one who will defeat the Emperor. And that makes her the character that bullies him and gets kicked out of the orphanage. She was the villain in the novel. The male lead lived a miserable and woeful life. Damien's father was Duke Clyder, the head of the Empire's foremost merchant guild. House Clyder was so influential that people said it was more essential to the Empire than the Imperial family itself. That led the Emperor to grow envious, and he offered someone to kill House Clyder secretly. Duke Clyder's final testament revealed that the house and entire wealth go directly to his best friend, Erhart. After that, it didn't take long for the Emperor, Duke Erhart, to attack the North so that he could be the target of much avarice. Did Duke Schuitz inherit the Clyder family's merchant guild? There were people who were close to Duke Clyder, but still, Duke Clyder left a will in the name of Duke Schuitz. There's nothing they can do. While Duke Schuitz was thinking, he needs to find the child as soon as possible. People had spread rumors that the child just looks like his father, with black hair and blue eyes. He knew that the child was alive even if the forest is a dangerous place to live. 
The girl in the orphanage knew that even if he was a slave in an earlier age, he would survive because he's the main lead. He was just standing in front of her. She knew he had been brutally beaten but didn't know it was this bad. She knew that she was the tallest, and there were people who were even taller than her, but he was even shorter than them. The director told everyone to tell him the rules of the orphanage. She went out. It was pin drop silent in the room. Someone walked towards him and said there are already so many kids, and she brought one more kid. Now everyone has to eat less because there's one more to feed. It was Carson, he was the oldest there. He said to Damien that if he needs to live there, he needs to do everything he says and should be able to obey him. He was not looking at Carson, and Carson got pissed. Few people started talking about how they don't like the look in his eyes and don't feel good about his clothes too. They started teasing him. She was thinking that those bullies will regret doing it. She was one of those bullies who bullied him and got out of the orphanage and then died alone after that. She was determined to stay alive no matter what happens. Carson asked Ellie if she wanted to join him to bully, but she refused. Carson asked what happened. She said that boy looks weak, that's all. She noticed that the boy was looking at her, and everyone was laughing at his weakness, saying he's good for nothing. Their eyes met. She remembered something about her mother and as he's saying she's the dirty daughter of a thief mother. The director came, and she said it's time for preparing the dinner, and everyone agreed. A small girl calls out for Ellie as well, and she knew that Carson will start bullying him again. She was thinking that if she ignores everything and doesn't interfere, then she can avoid the ending anyway. She was cleaning the food and ignored it anyway. She knew he's the main character. He will do something about it. She was thinking what she'll do after leaving the orphanage. She was cooking. The main character will survive anyway even after being brutally beaten by people. She just couldn't able to forget the look he gave her and kept saying that there are people who lose their lives by poking their nose into other people's business. In the end, she did go there to help him out one last time. She took a long breath and banged the door. Carson came out and said she got him scared. He thought it's the director. She asked what they were doing there alone by themselves. They agreed to let her take a look. They were beating Damien. Carson said he will teach him a lesson. Carson kept saying that he thought this kid is a girl. But he's a guy. And what kind of guy has that pretty face? Over this, she said at least he has a better face than Carson. Carson got angry. She smiled and said she was kidding. And the director was actually looking for him. Carson got angry that what does the director need from him? Ellie says she asked her where he was, and she wouldn't wait much because they know her. Carson warned Damien and said he had a lucky day, pushed him back and then left the room. Ellie asked him whether it was good or not. His nose was bleeding, so he cleaned his nose with his dirty clothes. Ellie got angry and said not to do it, it will cause an infection to him. She gave him something she stole from the director's room. He looked away. She asked what happened. He said they'll beat him before the wounds even get healed. So it's better to leave him and not to bother him again. The more someone resists violence, it will rise again. But if one leaves it like this, violence will quell. He understood it at a young age, and she was stunned to see he was small, but he understood it. She gave it to him and said to use it anyway. She then quickly left there. She thought she understood Damien completely, but when she looked into his eyes, she realized they both were similar. She couldn't breathe as if there was something inside her lungs. She was just standing there in the hallway. It was supper time. The director asked everyone to silently have their supper without any chattering during dinner. Everyone was having their dinner, while Ellie was still concerned about Damien. She had a guess maybe Damien gonna skip the dinner. If he skipped the supper, he may be starving by tomorrow. Tommy said to Ellie that if she's not going to have that bread, she should give it to him. Ellie grabbed her bread and said this one belongs to her only. Tommy thought she isn't gonna eat that bread. Ellie told him she will gonna eat it sooner or later. She was saving it for Damien. She didn't know whether he will eat the bread or not. She came back to the same room where Damien was bullied by Carson. She wanted to give him that bread she saved. It was her work to help in the kitchen, but she left her work for Damien. She wanted to give him bread. The room was empty. She locked the door and thinking if he's not there then where could he be? He asked what she was doing there alone looking for a ghost or something. As soon as she was leaving, Carson arrived. She noticed it was Carson. She threw away his statement, saying she wasn't looking for a ghost or something but she was actually looking for Betty there. Carson started again talking about Damien and making fun of him there. She understood he was talking about Damien. He said he heard the director through peeking, and he got to know that Damien was a slave before coming there. She was shocked. He kept saying how he hunted the monster in the dark by himself. Few kids didn't believe that a kid could kill a monster. Carson again started teasing Ellie. He said Ellie maybe have a crush on that kid or something. She slammed the door. She knew that Carson always used to tease kids, and especially to those kids where Ellie shows interest in. 
If only he was less irritating, and she could have understood his childish behavior. Ellie told them she's not really into him. Also tells them she might have seen him going to the warehouse. They wondered why the warehouse. Because only teachers were allowed to go there then why would he be there inside? She said maybe it's because he was special. Carson got pissed. She said he was with the assistant teacher. And the warehouse has many delicious food in there. Because Damien's was really pretty. The orphanage always takes good care of them. She said he was gifted maybe because of that they are treating him with special. Damien doesn't work because he's still a slave and has a master too. And Carson doesn't know about it. Carson told her he was stood there when they got roughened on him. She knew if she praises him, he likes it. And she asked if he was stronger than him. He was confident about that and said that everyone to follow him to the warehouse. They were trying to teach him another lesson. She called Carson and gave him the bread and said to take it with him. Carson got shy and his friends were teasing him. He then asked why but said thanks and left. She stood there. Late at night, the director came and said to light to be closed now. Ellie left the orphanage with a lamp. She was walking alone in the snow. She was thinking that maybe Carson and his friends have gotten caught by the director in the warehouse, and she gave him bread so that they came to be portrayed as thieves. She thought that the bread was at least got used but she wanted to give it to Damien. She was wondering where he was. Damien was a slave before coming to the orphanage. She remembered something and thought he might have gone to haunt the monsters. In this story, the Duke Schuetz asked the question to the boy about if he ever took the swordsman training before. To that, Damien said in the dark, I had no choice but to learn how to fight. And that's how he survived there. When she was reading that book, she thought it was some hackneyed platitude which implied that pain and darkness are parts of the hero's journey. She kept walking and suddenly knelt down said if he kept sitting there he would catch a cold. He was sitting on ice near the tree. She told him that Carson and his friends got into trouble with the director, so he doesn't have to worry about them anymore and asked to come inside the orphanage. He thought and said they'll get free from trouble sooner or later. He felt safer sitting on ice rather than going inside the orphanage. She was wrong about Damien. His life wasn't the same as she thought it would be. He chose darkness over light. He always looked for himself so that was maybe the reason how he learnt to use the sword. She said no one wants to live alone in the darkness and they won't bother him anymore. They won't be there for any more days. She promised him as well that she will look after him if anyone tries to hurt him. She again asked him to come inside the orphanage age. He looked at her and remembered how earlier she helped him with the pain. But he didn't understand why does she want to help him anyway. And she said because she wants to. Because she really wants to help him out anyway. It was true, she genuinely wanted to help him out. She didn't know whether he would understand her or not, but she can't let herself die like the original story. She told him to come with her as she was worried about him and couldn't eat because of that. She said she'll give him dinner. He agreed to walk with her. They were walking together, holding hands. Damien was able to avoid the fight that alone managed to change her destiny. They came back to the orphanage. She told him to be very quiet. The director and the teacher must have gone to the casino, but they need to be very quiet. He nodded to her. She asked him to take off his clothes as they were dirty, and he can't get to bathe with dirty clothes on. He hesitated. She told him that the director's bathwater is nice and warm, and he was cold as ice. If he doesn't get warm water soon, someone has to cut off his fingers and legs if he gets frostbite. He started rubbing both of his hands together. She told him that won't work. She asked if he doesn't want her to stay there then and he said his body is repulsive. She understood that as a slave he must have gotten scars from his master. He said if she sees his body she would get back or scared of him. She grabbed his hands and let him know that he's not repulsive and there should be no guilt he should have within himself neither he should be ashamed of himself anymore. He was too stunned to say anything. She said him to follow her inside and wash himself quickly as she didn't know when the director will be back. She assured that he can wash alone himself even with the injury. She sent him inside and told him she has left few clothes outside the door and bathe himself with warm water. She went to find something in the warehouse. He saw warm water coming into the bathtub. He got into the bathtub and washed himself. He was enjoying the bath, and Ellie came there directly without knocking on the door. She asked if he was done bathing himself. He wore the clothes she gave him, and he nodded yes to her. She noticed that clothes were big but they were the smallest clothes she ever found. He looked cute in those clothes so she let him have those clothes for himself. She found a few sandwiches in the warehouse while he was bathing himself. He poked into the sandwiches. She wondered if he never eaten anything like this before. He never ate something like that. She made that weird face. She got angry. She didn't understand what did they actually feed to their slaves and how Damien was actually even raised. She gave him one sandwich and helped him how to eat the sandwich. He was looking at her silently. He started eating as well. He ate all the sandwiches. He liked it, and she was pleased to see. 
she saw his hairs were still dripping water. She understood he is just a kid. She helped him to clean his hairs and dry them so he does not catch cold. He leaned toward her, and she understood that he's believing in her a bit a lot. While drying his hairs, she noticed some scars on his necks. He was beaten by an animal. She asked how did he get those scars. He told her that he already had those scars when he was picked up, and his master told him to grow his hairs so nobody sees his scar. She understood why the book mentioned about his hairs were long because of his scar. She was pissed to understand that the world was cruel towards him as a child even in the imagination book. She noticed that his frontal hairs were so long and asked him if it bothers him or not. She understood that her bangs were long as well and things won't be the same from now on. She looked at him, he was looking handsome. She understood his beauty isn't good for her. He was so much prettier than expected. He got flushed when he noticed she was looking at him. She got worried. She thought he might have caught a fever and checked his temperature by putting her hand on his head. She asked if he had caught a fever or not. He said he's fine but he feels hot for no reason. She was happy to hear that he has not caught a cold. She took him to the bedroom where everyone used to sleep. She opened the door. Everyone else was sleeping. Tommy woke up by the door sound. He asked who was behind her. She told him to be quiet or Betty will wake up. She also told him she's all alone and no one is with her. He went back to sleep. She found an empty bed. She understood that Carson and his friends were not there. She has to be careful even though they were not there. She showed him his bed and hers as well. She told him one is closer to the door and hers is near the window. She told him they are supposed to sleep separately. It was his first night so she agreed to share the bed with him. He got confused hearing this. She asked him to come faster and pats on the bed. He hesitated. He just slept there. She understood that it was his first time in the bed. She pulled up the blanket over him and she smelled something. She understood that she's been into the director's bathroom but she never smelled something like this before. She noticed she was acting like a creep and started patting Damien and said to him to sleep. She asked him if he's not going to say goodnight to her. He said sleep tightly Ellie. She was happy to hear this. He turned to the other side. They both slept. He peeked through the blanket and saw her fast asleep. He didn't understand how unusual person she was. He remembered how she told Carson he's just weak. He thought maybe she's just guilty for what she has done to him. Most persons keep their distance from slaves but she was different. He remembered how she was there for him throughout the day. He was thinking that he might not be repulsive. He remembered her how her eyes sparkled when she said earlier. Those eyes were pretty. He won't believe he said to himself. He slept and in his dream, he was fighting a monster holding a sword. How the monster used to roar and his master told him to entertain them as slaves work at this. He can die even of fighting their master. Won't care about that too. How they used to bet money on that boy and can't afford him losing any battle. No one ever came to save him. He was determined that he will die if he didn't kill this monster. He gathered all his courage and he was determined to kill that monster. Ellie woke him up upon his dream. He woke up with terror on his face. She was worried about that to see. She asked him whether he had a nightmare or caught a cold. She checked his temperature and was relieved to know he didn't have any fever but he was sweating heavily. She asked him if he was okay or not. He had a blurry image towards her. She looked at him, he looked sick enough. He looked at her. No one was ever concerned about him as Ellie was. She was kind to him. She then went to find some washcloth for him. He grabbed her skirt. He was fine he said. He doesn't feel sick or anything. She set him to rest again. Pats on his head. It was strange for him. He noticed whenever he was with Ellie he felt warm and tingly. As if she holds the sunshine within inside her. Or he should have told her that he was sick. And then he heard a bang on the door. It was Carson. He was angry at Ellie. He asked Ellie if she did on purpose. Ellie was a bit sad too. Carson was yelling at Ellie. He was angry because if the director had found him there, they could have done something worse to him. He told her that she knew he was not in the warehouse. He blamed Damien. She asked why he was blaming Damien. He was shocked to the core hearing this from her side. She said he was a fool for falling for that idea. She looked at the clock. He asked her how she could do it to him and grabbed her shoulders, yelling at her what she was actually planning to do with him. The director saw and said Carson hadn't learned his lessons yet. Carson tried to explain the situation. He tried to explain how Ellie called him an idiot and she was the one who started it. He asked the other kids as well if they had heard it too. The director lady came forward to him and said not to be ridiculous, kid, because he was always the first to raise his hands on the other kids, and that was the reason no noble was interested in him. He told her it was Ellie's fault they snuck into the warehouse. The director asked Ellie about this. She told her that Damien was really sick yesterday so she went there to get some medicine for him. But Carson told her all the teachers had gone to the casino. Carson was shocked to hear this from Ellie. She made a crying face and said she would never believe that teachers would leave them and have fun in the casino. 
he hesitated, and she took one more step towards him to ensure that she wouldn't ask him any more questions. She said she noticed something strange. She asked whether the door of the warehouse was left open by any chance. Yesterday the director sent her on an errand, so she was the last person to lock it. Ellie was worried if someone saw them there. The teacher confirmed that no one was there other than them. The teacher got chilled there. Ellie apologized again, saying she was sorry and careless about everything. She said she would go with Carson to the director and explain everything. The teacher shouted no because of her secret. The teacher again pointed at Carson, asking why he had lied to Ellie about the teachers. Something bad could have happened because of him. Carson said he never said such things to anyone. He said Ellie was lying. Ellie stood there crying. The teacher grabbed him and took him outside the bedroom area. Carson kept yelling it wasn't him. They both left the bedroom area. It was silent for a moment. She thought Carson wouldn't bother Damien at least for now. She turned and asked Betty and Tommy with a smile that they should leave before the director scolds them. Betty ran and hugged Ellie and asked when she would come. Ellie patted her head and told her that she'll be joining her soon. Betty asked her to come faster. Damien said Ellie, the teacher, must have left the orphanage last night. Ellie told him that she would do anything to protect him from others. She wanted to pay them for what they've done to him. He wondered why she wants to protect him anyway. He said that grown-ups should be the ones to protect and care for children. Probably Damien hadn't met any grown-up who takes care of children and protects them. She said there would be someone who would take care of him. He will be able to trust them. He asked if he does trust them, then what he should do. He will live happily after that, she said. Tommy ran into the bedroom and said to Ellie that the director had awoken and she should go downstairs. She was frightened and took Damien's hand, running towards the downstairs, saying if she saw them there sitting and dilly-dallying, she would scold them both. He looked at her, and he didn't understand what that feeling was about. Carson was so angry. He said Damien would pay for it. He was stuck in that room because of Damien. He didn't understand why Ellie took his side. He didn't understand why she was sticking up for him like he was her little brother or something. Carson was getting more and more pissed off. But Ellie's affection wouldn't last so long. It would be all Carson's again sooner. Something was cooking up. She tasted the soup and it was all good to have it. She asked Damien if he could stir the soup with the ladle. He didn't say anything, rather, he just nodded to her. She noticed that he hadn't said anything since the morning, maybe because of the lie she told the teacher. She also understood that he had faced so many problems until now as well. Maybe it's because he's not used to telling lies, so maybe he's a bit vexed. She didn't understand anything. She asked if he was thinking about what happened earlier that morning. He didn't understand. So she directly said he was thinking about the lie she told the teacher. He said that he wasn't really thinking about that and said not to worry too much about it. If he was thinking of getting revenge, then he should do it properly. She said she might have lied, but that's much better than being used by someone. Regardless of what life was until now, he can't let people take advantage of him anymore, she said. She smiled and asked for assurance from him. He looked at her and was thinking he was never told something like this before, and he only survived by obeying master's orders. He promised himself that he would never let anyone use him ever again, and he would protect her just like she had protected him earlier, no matter what it takes him to do it. The director woke up with a headache. She was thinking that she didn't even drink that much yesterday at the casino, and she needed to sober up. She still had a headache and somehow managed to come into the kitchen. She saw Damien working there and wondered why he was there. Only if she hadn't lost that game or if she had fewer drinks. She had made a deal with a guy who told her that her debts would be cleared if she took care of Damien until he returns. She told everyone that Damien was going to live with them. But the truth was that his master would be back sooner and he's just a slave. If his master found out that Damien was working there, he wouldn't be pleased to see this. The teacher scolded Carson, saying that he should be in the room rather than being there. He didn't do anything he should not be held Carson shouted. The director asked Melina what was going on there. Melina told the director about how Damien was behaving and that he stole a loaf of bread from the warehouse. Carson said he didn't steal anything but rather someone gave it to him. She said he should not say anything more and this wasn't the first time he was caught stealing something. The director had a headache, so she told Melina to take care of Carson, and that another lesson needed to be taught. Melina grabbed Carson's hand. He was determined that he wouldn't go down like this. Carson blamed Damien as well, saying that he came with him but got away with it. Ellie came forward in support of Damien, saying he didn't go there last night. She said he was sick, so she stayed with him all night. Carson said why does she always lie and she was the one who told him to go to the warehouse. Ellie told the director that Carson is bullying other students. The director didn't understand anything. The director looked directly at Ellie. She was furious. She remembered the day when Ellie was brought there. Ellie asked her why she had to go back to the orphanage again. 
She said it's because of her sleazy mother. She was just tired of picking her up again and again. She has returned to the orphanage so many times. She never made any disturbance, but she was defending Damien. She found something was fishy about her concern towards Damien. As the director was looking at Ellie and Damien, Carson yelled out that he was telling the truth. She needed to believe Carson that he didn't steal the loaf of bread. The director already had a hangover, so she got more pissed because of Damien. She told Melina to handle Carson and not let the new kid work around there. Then, handling herself, the director left from there. Ellie told Damien to wait in the dining area. Damien asked about whether she would come with him or not, but she had to stay there to work. He held her dress. She patted him and told him that they were almost finished and would be joining him there soon. The reason why the director didn't tell him to work with the other kids was because of his master. His master wouldn't like his working there, but that thing would definitely bother the other kids. She said he would wait for her. Damien didn't let her dress go away. The teacher called him again to follow her and took both of them to the dining area. Tommy asked whether they both were going to get punished or not because the teacher's hits really hurt a lot. They must be scared, Betty said. She was glad that the kids didn't know what was going on there. The director didn't want anyone to know as well. She determined that she would look for Damien after she finished there. Everyone was playing in the dining area, but Damien was sitting in a corner. He hated being alone, but he also didn't want to lose Ellie. She came and asked him if he had waited for her or not and asked him to breakfast together. Her work was done. He wanted to sit next to Ellie, and she told him that they made something delicious for everyone that day. Tommy came and said he'd sit next to Ellie. Damien looked confused. Tommy was in a better mood, so he didn't care about Carson anymore. So, Ellie asked him to sit somewhere else as Damien was new there. But Tommy didn't want to sit somewhere else. Ellie told him if he shared his things with others, then he would get famous easily. Tommy agreed to share his seat with Damien because he wanted to get famous. She knew Tommy was just still a kid. She gave the seat to Damien. Damien looked at Tommy and felt he was a nice kid. Suddenly, someone started crying. Betty was crying because her doll was dropped into the soup. Ellie rushed towards Betty. She hugged Betty and comforted her somehow. She told Betty they would clean the part. She would clean her doll for her as well. It was silent there. Damien was sitting all by himself alone. Tommy introduced himself. As Damien and Ellie were close, so he thought maybe they could spend time together. Damien didn't say anything. Tommy thought he was maybe shy and said they could play together as three. He heard friend got excited. Tommy told him Ellie and him are best friends. Damien looked at him with scary eyes. Tommy got freaked out. Then, after Ellie came and asked if Damien was enjoying the meal or not, he nodded yes towards her. He started eating faster than before he was eating. Tommy was shocked to see. Ellie asked if something was wrong. Damien gave him a scary look again. So he just said nothing happened there. Tommy was scared. He thought Damien was just a nice little guy. But he was another beast in a small body. During the night, she took him again to the bathing room and asked whether he was done washing or not. He came out of the shower. She noticed his cheeks were soft, more like squishy squishy, but she must not poke his cheeks, not when he's about to open up. She wiped his face. She noticed that his hairs usually came in the way. She should offer to cut those hairs, but if any nobleman would see him, they would take him away. She cannot let that happen. Duke Shewitz has to adopt him anyway. Then they went to the bedroom. She said he can sleep on his bed from now on. He was a bit worried about sleeping all by himself. She said he has to sleep all by himself. He didn't want to, maybe. She looked at him and thought he might want to say something. He turned around, climbed on his bed, and slept there. Many things had happened that day. She thought he's tired maybe. She went to sleep as well. She said goodnight to Damien. He replied as well. And she was stunned to see that. That was the first time Damien has said her name. She was so happy that Damien was saying her name. Ellie woke up in the middle of the night. She wanted to go to the toilet. She saw Damien's bed. He wasn't there. She thought where did he go? Betty was awake as well. Betty told her Carson took him. Ellie got scared. Carson took him out of the orphanage. He was beating Damien and saying because of him he had to suffer a lot. Damien was bleeding. Carson's friends were laughing as well. He won't be spared even if Ellie is on his side. Carson said he means nothing to her. He looked at Carson and Carson teased him again for looking at him. Said what does Damien gonna do about it? He remembered how Ellie told him not to let people take advantage of him. Damien was in a rage. Carson again said that Ellie is good for nothing weaklings like Damien. As he was about to hit Carson, Carson said he's just like other guys whom she takes care of. It wasn't like he was special or something. He had heard many cruel words. Nothing has ever bothered him. Every time someone has said something he used physical violence, but this time when Carson said he's nothing to Ellie, 
he felt like he's going deeper and deeper into the water, like ashes in the wind. As Carson was about to hit him with his legs he called him slave and said he should know his place. Carson was teasing him, saying he's just a slave and nothing more. They are not equals. Carson then threw him into the water. As he was about to fall into the water, Ellie came and rescued him. Everyone was shocked to see her there. Ellie, with fearless eyes, asked them what they were doing to Damien. She was running heavily. She wanted to catch them as soon as possible. Carson usually threw kids into the lake he doesn't like. And it was winter there, that lake must be freezing. Damien was in danger. She looked at him with fearless eyes. She was so angry at Carson. Carson was chilled as he looked at her. She asked what they were planning to do with him. Carson didn't understand why she was doing this to him. He remembered how she refused to bully that kid earlier. He didn't understand why she was saving Damien. What makes him so special? She took him to the shelter. There was a reason why Carson didn't like Damien for a reason. Carson, out of anger, tried to punch Damien again. It was all his fault. Everything was going wrong. Ellie grabbed Damien and dodged Carson's punch. Carson was about to get dropped into the lake. Carson got dropped into the water. His friends were trying to help. Damien and Ellie were aside from there. Ellie told Carson that he went too far this time and also what a horrible person he is. She simply walked away with Damien out of there. As they were walking, he realized it was the first time he saw her angry. He didn't understand why she was mad at him. Because he was too weak or perhaps it's all just a dream. Damien took his hands back. She looked at him and asked why didn't he fight back with Carson. Why didn't he resist them? He realized that she was mad because of him. She asked if they made fun of him. And he asked if that is the reason why she was always helping him throughout the time. If that was the reason why she was helping him then she should have let him be himself because he has already faced something like this before. She understood everything and told him that she does not think he's weak. She was also feeling sorry for not apologizing earlier for calling him weak. She told him that she does not think he's weak or something. She told him that he's stronger than anyone there in the orphanage. But that's not really what he wanted to hear from her. He knew that she helped him because she felt about him. He started crying there. She was shocked to see him crying, thought she might have said something wrong to him. He told her that he thought he was annoying to her, and he didn't know why and how. He was rubbing his eyes strongly, wiping his tears. She told him not to do so. She pampered him, saying his beautiful face will get swollen. He asked whether she hates him or not but she said she does not hate him. And he was talking about the time she avoided eye contact with him. He told her about something was bad in her heart. He was talking about the time when he took a bath. She told him that she avoided contact because of another reason. He started crying again. She promised him she won't do it again. She was relieved that he stopped crying. He told her that he will hold her hands and will eat together with her. She agreed with this but also made him sure if someone tries to hurt him he will defend himself. Don't let other people pull him down no matter what happens. He promised her as well. She told him to get back into the orphanage and treat his injuries. As they were walking together back, he realized that Ellie showed him the truth and the true happiness. He remembered the times when she was with him in all the situations. He felt so much joy when he was crying. He knew this was happiness they were talking about. And that's the reason he became himself a little bit greedy. A man said please spare him. It was Duke Schuetz who was killing people. He said the information he got was wrong. It was all a waste of time for him. He walked away from there in an attitude. He told his servant to follow him to the next region. They came back to the orphanage. Ellie was patting him and told him to get some sleep. Damien held her dress and asked her if they could sleep together. He said he was still having scary nightmares and wanted to sleep together. Ellie told him their beds were not big enough for two people. He looked at her with big eyes, about to cry upon hearing this news. Ellie thought it wasn't such a difficult request, so she let him sleep on her bed by the window. Damien was happy to sleep there with her, and Ellie was glad to see him happy. She felt like they were siblings. Damien removed her hands, saying he's not her little brother. She reminded him that he's just 11 and she's 13. He looked sad. She thought he was mad and shouldn't be treated like a kid. She assured him she was just kidding and that sleeping beside him felt nice and warmer. This made him feel a bit better. Then she told him to sleep, and they both fell asleep. In the morning, Ellie made a flower crown for herself and Damien. She told Damien that he looked pretty. He thanked Ellie for making him happy again. Ellie was concerned and asked him if he was feeling sick. He coughed and said he's fine. She told him not to lie and to tell her when he actually started feeling sick. He said he hadn't been feeling well since last night. Ellie asked Tommy to check his temperature, and Tommy told her that he had a high fever and should stay in bed for at least a day. She told him to stay in bed as Tommy advised. He asked about Ellie. She told him she needed to work, or the director would yell at her for no reason. He worried that Ellie would leave him again. She reassured him not to worry, she'll be back quickly and make soup for him. 
he asked her to be there as soon as possible. She left him with Tommy, who didn't know what to do. He was stunned and thought this kid was wily. As Ellie was working, she noticed that the director was still there and had no plans to leave. To get the medicine, the director had to leave, but she was in a bad mood. The director got angry and told Ellie to clean faster. She cleaned everything quickly and went out. The director was worried about the orphanage's finances. They had many kids, and their finances were very low. She thought maybe she should sell the mana stone. Mana stones are rare and can be used for magic. It was hard for her to get these stones, and she didn't want to sell them. She looked at Ellie. She thought if Ellie wasn't the daughter of a thief, she would have sold her to pay off her debts. The teacher came inside and told the director that Duke Schuetz and the nobles wanted to adopt the children. He was visiting people who had adopted children. He asked some people if they had adopted a kid with black hair, but they said he didn't have blue eyes. The director asked Melina if she had spread rumors about the late Duke Clyder's child being in the orphanage. Melina was concerned about the lie. He asked the director what they would do if it turned out to be a lie considering it was Duke Schuetz after all. She told him not to speak such words. Duke Schuetz had never seen the child in person, so he wouldn't know the difference between fake and real. She told him to do as she said, and Melina agreed. Ellie heard all of this from outside. She thought Duke Schuetz was finally there to pick him up. Duke Schuetz exclaimed, how pathetic. He was angry with some people and stated that he couldn't be deceived by the herbs they brought to him. Those people asked for forgiveness from Duke Schuetz, claiming they didn't know it was him and begged for mercy. The man standing beside Duke Schuetz suggested that he should at least listen to them, as he hadn't come there to kill them. Duke Schuetz retorted that they had committed a sinful crime and he wouldn't forgive them. He demanded to know where the child was if they valued their lives. They were stunned to learn that the child belonged to the late Duke Clyder. They informed him that the child was at the orphanage, explaining that their friend ran it and she had left him there due to his age, as it would be difficult for a child of his age to be with them. Duke Schuetz raised his sword, ready to strike, but the man beside him intervened, addressing Duke Schuetz as your grace and informed him that they might not be entirely lying. He mentioned receiving a letter a few days ago stating that the child Duke Schuetz was searching for was at St. Orphanage. Duke Schuetz was surprised to hear this news belatedly, having searched every orphanage in the kingdom without success. The man explained that the orphanage used the name to secure funding and make a profit. He intended to inform Duke Schuetz after confirming the news. Duke Schuetz was furious but refrained from immediate action upon the man's apology. He decided to deal with them later, punishing them for their deceit, and sent a letter to the orphanage, announcing his visit. As he departed, he resolved to deal with those people first, swiftly killing them both. In the orphanage, the teachers were worried about dealing with the sick child. The director was furious, questioning how they could expect to recover after soaking in the lake. Concerned about Duke Schuetz's imminent arrival, she decided to give the children cheap medicine to present them to him, planning to sell her mana stone to afford it. However, upon opening the cupboard, she discovered the mana stone was missing. Ellie was worried about Damien's fever and applied wet towels to his head. She informed him that the face cloth she had given him was warm now and went to soak it in cold water. Damien pleaded with her not to leave him alone, but Ellie insisted his fever was too high. She remained until he fell asleep and then sneaked out, taking the mana stone with her to alleviate his condition. She was also concerned about Carson but prioritized Damien's weakness. She found Damien adorable and decided to get something for him but was caught by the director as she was leaving. The director accused her of stealing and lying, likening her to her mother. Ellie protested, asking what her mother had to do with it. The director accused her of repaying her kindness with theft and slapped her. Damien intervened, standing in front of Ellie and warned the director not to touch her, threatening to make her pay if she did. The director was shocked to see the angry look on his face. She asked why he had to poke his nose into her matter. She remembered how her masters had told the director that this child was very angry about everything and he could get dangerous as well. As she was scolding both of them, Melina came and called the director. She told her that they had received a letter and he would be there shortly. She was shocked to hear this. She ordered Melina to dress the children in nice clothes with black hair and blue eyes. She told them both that she would deal with them later. As the director was leaving, Ellie asked about Damien from her. The director asked, what about him? Ellie told her that he had black hair and blue eyes too. The director told her that she couldn't show him to Duke Schuetz in that condition, as it would be a total disgrace to him. Damien fainted there, and Ellie rushed towards him. The director told her that a child as sick as him needs rest more than anything. She told her good luck with nursing him and walked away. He was calling for Ellie, and she said it would be all fine. She told him that she would make sure he gets reunited with his family. Duke Schuetz arrived, and the teachers there greeted him. 
He was thinking that the orphanage was far from the city and needed a horse and carriage to get there, which was good for children. He asked, where is the director? She should have responded to my letter by then. Melina told Duke Schuetz that they received their letter just before his arrival and they were late to tell the director about that. The director asked about the child. They didn't say anything about the child, as the director hadn't said to say anything. Duke Schuetz thought what a mess it was. He said he would find that child himself. Duke Schuetz was saying that the place was so cold and it's not good for young children. The man walking next to Duke Schuetz said he was thinking the same as well. He told the man to kill all the people there if they lied about Duke Clyder's child being there. Ellie got directly into Duke Schuetz. She fell down. Duke Schuetz asked her if she could stand and ask for an apology from her. Duke Schuetz noticed her bright green eyes. She told him it was hard to stand up. She asked Duke Schuetz who he was. The man standing next to Duke Schuetz was shocked to see that she didn't know who he was. She asked them directly if they were there to adopt a child. They said yes and she was joyful. She said the children were in the director's room. The director was checking kids with black hair and blue eyes. All five of them were there. Duke Schuetz said, he was hiding from us. The man said that she must be playing something at us. He didn't know what she was hiding, but he got into the mood of killing people. He said thanks to Ellie and Ellie bowed to him. Duke Schuetz said they should be getting going as well. The man thought what a child faced Duke Schuetz without crying. But he remembered how there was one more child who had faced Duke Schuetz without crying. But it was long ago. The director welcomed him, and the kids were hiding behind the director. Duke Schuetz asked if they were the children she had, and she said they were the children with blue eyes and black hair he was looking for. All the children started crying suddenly. She didn't know what to do because all the children started crying suddenly. He had a stone with the mana of Duke Clyder's son. The stone would glow if the sun was nearby there. The director asked him what happened to her. Duke Schuetz said she was lying about the kids and ordered Auntie to kill her. The director was shocked to hear this and didn't understand. The director asked for an apology from Duke Schuetz. She said the child he was looking for was among these four. He wanted a child with black hair and blue eyes, and all of them were there. He said one is missing. Duke Schuetz took his sword and put that sword just behind her ears. He asked her where that one child was. He said to her that if she lied to him, she would die here. She was sitting near the bed, holding Damien's hands. She heard voices coming from other rooms. She knew that Duke Schuetz was coming into that room. Even though all she wanted was about to become true, she was sad after all. But it was the best for Damien. She held his hands and said, it won't be this hard from now on. Damien awoke and asked Ellie what she meant. Duke Schuetz was walking towards the room. She said she promised him. She promised him to reunite him with his family members. As she was speaking to Damien, Duke Schuetz slammed the door open. Damien said, him a family. He didn't understand anything. Duke Schuetz looked at them. Duke Schuetz was standing there and the teachers were shaking their legs behind him in fear. Auntie was shocked to see Duke Schuetz was acting emotional. He hadn't seen him emotional ever since his wife passed away. He thought he would never see him again in such a manner. He had heard that that young boy was quite screwy. Duke Schuetz looked at her, and she looked at him straight as well. He recognized her as the girl who earlier got bumped into him. Damien saw this and stood directly in front of Ellie to protect her. Ellie said Damien should not stand there. Damien, with angry eyes, said, Don't you dare look at Ellie like that. He didn't care who was standing there. He would make Duke Schuetz pay if he hurt Ellie. Duke Schuetz teased him, saying he can't even stand straight and he wants to protect that girl. Duke Schuetz looked at that mana stone. It was bright as the sun. Duke Schuetz recognized that it was Duke Clyder's son. Damien fell down to the ground. Ellie took him into her hands. She was worried about him. Duke Schuetz said not to worry about the kid. He would be fine. He has only reabsorbed the mana that was taken away from him. Ellie checked and noticed that the fever was down from Damien's body. Duke Schuetz said he has found the child. Duke Schuetz asked the teachers if they could tell him why the kid looks so unhealthy. He kept saying if he found some unsatisfactory reason, he would cut everyone's head. But for now, he ordered them to gather the adoption papers and to call the director. Ellie was wondering that Duke Schuetz was exactly like how he was defined in the book. A man domineering beyond compare and able to intimidate those around him with ease. Auntie said that Duke Schuetz was more frightening than a phantom and he should be calmer. He said that all the teachers ran away. Auntie thought by the look of Duke Schuetz, Damien felt down because he got scared. He kept saying that he had a personality that people would definitely get scared of him and young Lord would be thrilled at the prospect of adoption. Auntie asked if the child was sleeping, but he saw that Duke Schuetz carried the kid into his hands and said they can't leave a kid on the floor. He also ordered Auntie to fetch some face cloth for him. Ellie asked him to let her handle the rest from there. 
Duke Shewitz looked at her and said she acted in such a way that she knew he was looking for this child but this was the first time he had been there. She got free because she didn't understand how he got to know. She knew he was testing her and she needs to answer it carefully. She knew if she messed up, she would end up like the story Ellie on the streets. So she told the truth. She said that she heard from the director. She told Ellie that to tell him the kids with the black hairs were there. And he understood that's the reason she points out that there were five children. She knew he was suspecting him. And if he found out something, then things could go worse. So she said she figured out that Damien could be the child Duke Schuitz was looking for. After all, he had blue eyes and black hairs. He again asked why didn't she let him straightly let him see Damien at the very first. She told him that she wanted him to look closely at the children so he can understand how things are there. Auntie brought the face cloth. She kept telling how teachers don't take care of them and they've hurt themselves while working there. And teachers leave them at night alone to go to the casino and gamble and have fun. She was hoping that he could see the situation there how bad it was. He noticed something about her. He asked for her name, and she replied Ellie. He also asked for Damien's name. By then, the director came inside and said that she heard he was looking for her. Director thought Ellie must have told something to Duke Shewitz, and she'll pay for it. Duke Shewitz said he will adopt the child. The director was shocked. Also, he said the young girl he would adopt her too. She was sitting next to Damien. He said he would adopt Ellie too. She was stunned. Auntie asked him if he was adopting her as well, but Duke Shewitz said she'd be his daughter-in-law. She was shocked to hear it. She was thinking that a young girl would be his wife, the lead character. She looked at Damien. Damien was asleep, saying, Ellie, don't leave him. She was thinking it hadn't been that long, but she was attached to Damien. She was also happy that they wouldn't be apart from there. The director said he couldn't take her with him. She yelled and said he didn't have any idea who and what the girl is. She knew if Duke Shewitz adopted her, it was finished for her. She had to stop him from adopting her. She said her mother was a thief and she's the daughter of a criminal. Ellie was angry at the director. A thief, when the war was going on, she was able to get inside the palace and steal the emperor's most precious treasure. The emperor had searched for the thief, but he didn't find her. And one day, they were able to capture her. Auntie heard about that story and she was hanged on sight. He wondered that she had a daughter. The director begged Duke Shewitz to reconsider her adoption and taking such a child into his home would destroy his reputation. Duke Shewitz, with anger, said enough. He said he couldn't take her nonsense and ordered Auntie to take her away from there. Duke Shewitz kneeled to Ellie and said he would let her decide whether she wanted to come with him or not. They both looked at each other. She said she had only one condition, to dismiss all the teachers that work there. Director yelled at her, calling her a brat and saying she was talking nonsense to Duke Shewitz. Auntie was shocked to see that someone had proposed their thoughts to Duke Shewitz. He wondered if that child was something else. She kept saying that even if they left with him, other children there would suffer, and these teachers needed to be punished for how they've been treating them. She also asked Duke Shewitz to help turn that orphanage into something good. And this way, the other children wouldn't have to suffer a lot and wouldn't be treated like products. Duke Shewitz agreed to her conditions. He stood up and called Auntie. Director kept saying that the girl was more cunning than she looks. Even though Auntie dragged her out of there, she was still cursing her. It was quiet for a moment. Ellie had no idea that Duke Shewitz would agree so easily. Duke Shewitz said the orphanage would be different from now on as she wanted. And he again asked her if she would come with him. She was thinking, what was his aim? Why does he want to take her with him? She didn't know what that person was, but it was good that things turned out positively. She thought to be on Damien's side until he meets the female lead and falls in love with her. And she agreed to come with him. Duke Shewitz ordered Auntie to remove all the teachers and director, and people of Shewitz will run the orphanage until a new director gets appointed there. He also said he would see that this place gets enough teachers to handle students. Ellie came and bowed to Duke Shewitz and said thanks to him. She looked back at the orphanage. She was relieved that her friends would be able to live a happy life there. She was happy, and Duke Shewitz noticed something odd about her. He thought she was the Emperor's spy, but she first offered her own condition before immediately coming with him. And on top of that, she was genuinely happy to see some changes in the orphanage. He was thinking about his wife, how she was willing to solve his problem but offered him to marry her. Betty came running and hugged Ellie. She was crying because she would never see Ellie after she left, as she had not seen any other kids who have left the orphanage. She said she would pay some visits to the orphanage sometimes, and they were asking if she promised them to be there for them. Duke Shewitz took out his cigar and lighter. He said don't bother glaring at him like that. His looks can't kill him. It was Damien. Duke Shewitz said he would be more threatening with a sword. Damien asked him why he adopted him and why he took Ellie as well. 
What was he trying to do? Damien asked Duke Schuetz. Why does Duke Schuetz want Ellie to be his daughter-in-law? And what will happen to Damien? Let's find out in the upcoming videos. Thank you for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more videos.